Blog Talk Radio. on the show for the third time. Welcome to the True North Podcast, hosted by Bill North up there in Seattle. Yours truly, Mark Mancini in Los Angeles, as Bill's getting his arm ready for next Tuesday. Honorary coach with the All-Star Game, 347-205-9631. If you happen to miss it, because we realize 30 minutes goes by quick, Catch the archive version on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Mancini Sports podcast platforms, wherever you subscribe to podcasts, powered now by Mancini Media. So without further ado, more of him, less of me. Let me lay the red carpet down, put the podium in its place, hand off the mic. Bill of Threes, how are you? How can people get a hold of you? And you might have guessed that song by We Are Family. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Isn't that something? Hey, we got him back for the third time because he's got a lot of information we like. <laughs> but I'm okay, Mark. Got a little allergy problem. Uh, but you can reach me at BillNorte15 at gmail.com, B-I-L-L-N-O-R-T-E-1-5 at gmail.com. Lee, how you doing, bud? Oh, pretty good, Bill. And, Mark, I just want to thank you for having me for a third consecutive time. Uh, that theme song brings back a whole lot of memories. Lot of memories. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. what a great song to come out at a time when we were uh, clinching uh, my first world championship in 1969. Uh, excuse me, in 1979. Um my first World Series was in 74, and then the second was in 77 and 78 under Lasorda. But the first one was under Walter Austin. We played uh, Bill and the uh, Oakland A's. Mm-hmm. When I hear that theme song, man, it just, it just, yeah, I can see stars now twirling his bat at the plate. Isn't that and, something? You know, yeah. I can hear his voice in the clubhouse saying, we're three down, we can come back. And, uh, you know, words, the subconscious mind is very, very powerful. A lot of people take it for granted. But you are what you think and what you believe in. And we will as believe man it. thinking. Yes, right. And we want it because of our thinking. Because we would be that. down if we hadn't went uh, with the understanding that no one has ever accomplished that. We would have been uh, – Kicked to the side and put in a and put in that category yeah. and booked away as a team that lost three straight and ended up <laughs> losing the fourth one and never coming back. Isn't that something? Yeah. Never build a chance yeah. against yourself. Yeah, oh. you know, good a good friend of mine uh, that also uh, Randy Lurch and Warren Brewster and I talked to Randy quite a bit too. He's convinced that he drove that stake through my heart when he hit the two home runs that knock us out and, 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 and give them the National League East. When they came into Pittsburgh that year, we swept the doubleheader on them, and then they beat us on Saturday because Randy Lurch had hit two home runs. <laughs> yeah. Randy Lurch was one of those special talents, too. So was uh, another guy who was a pitcher, was a guy by the name of uh, – of, um, Don Robinson, he was a great pitcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a big player, dude. Man. Yeah, he can play third base. He can play the outfield. He was a great pitcher, and he hit with power, man. He can hit. 
He yeah. was an all-around athlete. But when we came along, it was a um, – it was we had to make choices. We 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 couldn't uh, show our uh, talent in more ways than one. Then you either had to be a shortstop or a third baseman or a second baseman or a pitcher or an outfielder. You couldn't be a pitcher and a hitter. They said no, you got to pick one. And I think that was wrong because once I start looking back over my career. There was a lot of real good pitchers, man. There was really good hitters, man. Yeah. Rick Roden was another one a guy yeah. that was an excellent hitter, man, and a great pitcher. He could have he could have played the first or third, and he was a great hitter, man. He was an amazing hitter, man. So now we see guys like Shohei Otani, and yeah. we're giving him the world, man. I'm saying <laughs> we had have just been had an open mind. Uh, Back in the seventies and eighties, there was tons of uh, show 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 Atani's that could have fit that bill. I know. As a matter of fact, Lee, I want to go into that. I want to do a comparison of the metamorphosis of baseball from back when we played to today. And the first thing I want to talk about is is the talent, the difference in talent between players. These guys now are bigger, and, you know, they have more equipment and and more accessories to have success, but the game has changed, Uh, and a lot of talent has gone away from it. What do you think about that? Well, when I was coming along uh, to show you how things have changed, a manager usually didn't have to make a move uh, until – after the fourth or fifth inning, that's when he would decide to manage. So, because, you know, he would have got a chance to see the lineup once or twice, so he knew how to make his moves. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, you know, uh, a guy, uh, he, you know, he he just manages uh, against the three-run homer. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, he has really changed. And um, back in the day, you know, we were looking uh, for the single just as much as we were looking for the uh, three-run homer uh, because we always looked for that first and third situation because we always took a lot of pride in running the bases on a base hit going from first to third. Now you change the whole uh, defense and you and you change the way that a manager is going to manage the game now because now you have a first and third situation. And, um, you know, you can score on a sacrifice fly. But nowadays, you know, they want a guy to – a guy's up there just to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And yeah. we, we had a thing that we, that we really put in our, uh, um, uh, our uh, way of, of, of playing the game. Uh, we always wanted the first and third situation because uh, yeah. that was very productive. Yeah. You forced the issue. There was aggression. Right. Uh, but as far as hitting, let's go into that. Uh, uh, this, they teach players now about launch angle and all of that. And when they go through the strike zone, when they drop that arm and lift that shoulder, the swing is coming through at an angle, and you're kind of picking the ball out of the strike zone instead of driving it, you know, and, and it's the kind of thing that I feel that, you know, that leads to strikeouts and and less uh, 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 productivity, nuance in the game as far, yeah, and the three runs, they don't, you know, the slide step is stop, stop slow, stolen bases a little bit, but the thing that, the lack of aggression on the bases, and they got too many stopwatches. I think. Oh right. Well, see the the problem the problem that I have my major problem with 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 baseball is I never hear the word rally anymore. I right. Mean, we used to get a rally, man, and these were like guys up there that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Everybody would change up, and everyone would try to put the ball in play just to keep the rally going. And you just don't see a lot of rallies anyway anymore because you get a guy on first base now, and you know you got a pitcher in the stretch, which 
takes off the uh, the, the the velocity of the of the fastball, and uh, you know all guys are trying to do is hit the ball out of the ballpark instead of keep the rally going and go first and third. Because now when you go first and third, now it's a whole new approach to the game. You got to play for the double play because you got uh, less than one out. And, you know, so things are moving around, so it enhances your chances of getting a base hit and driving that run in and keeping the rally. So it's very important for guys to just to try to keep the rally going because that's have been a productive way in baseball all the way back when it was invented in 1876, if I'm not, uh, if I'm right. And you right. always keep the rally going first to third, puts a lot of pressure on the defense, wow. but it also puts a lot of pressure on the manager and makes him have to make moves that he would normally make because now, you know, you got the infield in. Uh, now uh, you're playing for the double play. So, therefore, sub- subsequently, uh, you're going to have um, a pitcher is going to throw more pitchers, more pitches. So it's going to make it very difficult to uh, – be able to utilize that pitcher like you want to because he's going to have to throw more pitches in a stretch position, and he's not going to have a lot on the on on the, on the fastball, and it creates a lot of uh, offense for the uh, wow. for the for the hitter. Now that you're talking about pitchers, I think that there's been a drastic change in the productivity of pitchers. That they think 200 innings is a a, a Good season, and that, and we had guys throw 280, 290, 300 plus innings back in those days. And what do you attribute that to? I mean, no, uh, what was it? It was Juan Marichal and Warren Spahn. Marichal threw 256 pitches in a game, pitching against Warren Spahn, who threw 201. But nowadays, guys are more prone to be their worst enemy because a lot of these guys, they have real good arms, you know, instead of – when we came along, Billy, they had a fastball, curveball, and a changeup. Now you got a sinker and you got a cutter. So that puts a lot of pressure on, on, on your arm. And the sad part about it, I don't see it being very effective. You know, the sinker – and all these other different pitches that these pitches have came up throwing. Right. When I came along, they were very effective throwing a fastball, a curveball, and a changeup. It was more then the mi- mindset was control over speed. Now guys are just trying to trick you. But what they're doing, they're tricking themselves because they're hurting their arms. Yeah, more yeah. Prob- more people getting the Tommy John surgery because guys are throwing 100 miles an hour, 98 miles an hour, and then all of a sudden they says, well, you know, now you got to sink it. Yeah. you got to sink it and you got to cut it. And now that puts more pressure on the arm. It's just saying, hey, man, you got a good curveball, you got a good changeup, you have a good fastball. Yeah. The whole objective in the play in the major leagues when I came along was control over speed. We had right. guys like uh, – uh, Don Sutton, who was control over speed, man, he was throwing, what, 89, 90 miles an hour, and he won 300 games because of the control over speed then. Nowadays, man, you know, a guy is, you know, trying to sink the ball, trying to cut the ball. So now, of course, you're going to have a lot of uh, injuries because sure. of that. You're going to have a, lot lot of, a lot of pitchers are having – uh, young pitchers are having their second surgery. Hold on one one second, man. I have. I'm doing an interview. Okay. I want to check out the time. But you know he brings up interesting points, Bill. Thank you, Paul. You know, he brings up great points on it. You know, they, they got kids yeah. that are coming out of college that are having arm problems, and I don't know if I'm, you know going to waste a pick on somebody that's got arm problems. We saw a few years ago with Kumar Rocker, who threw out of Vanderbilt, that he had a chance to be a Pirates number one pick, and the Pirates balked on it. They went with Henry Davis, the kid out of 
Louisville, and then Rocker went back in the draft, had Tommy John surgery, and I think the Mets selected him uh, at the 10th pick. So I think you got to be really leery about picking pitching in, in some of these yeah. rounds. And I know they compare these guys to, you know, the Nolan Ryans and the J.R. Richards and all this, but let me tell you, it's far and few between. Yeah. Well, what they're doing, Mark, is they're starting getting on that mound in the center of the diamond too early. Okay, and, yep. and, you know, a lot of, you know, with designated hitters and in in Little League and all that, it's the kind of thing that they're standing out there, and, uh, and I always maintain you're standing too close to the guy with the bat. And right. The, and the parents like to see their son in the middle of the diamond. When earlier pitchers, that we played against Lee were uh-huh. more inclined to be fielders and hitters and all of that being a better athlete yeah. rather than pitching. And they got guys pitching at too early of an age, to me. Yeah. Well, if you, if you look at the new draft now, the new baseball draft is coming out right yeah. now. I think the guy's name is Ween, W-E-I-E-N. Mm-hmm. And he has an overpowering fastball. He has a real good curveball, real good changeup, and he weighs 260 pounds. Now mm-hmm. already, they're start talking about he needs to sink the ball. He needs to cut the ball. And when mm-hmm. I seen this guy, the big guy, and how hard he was throwing, he doesn't need to. He doesn't need no sinker. All he needs to do is make sure he has that control over speed. So it can continue his dominance. If he needs to do anything, they need to work with him on his control when he releases the baseball. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I, I think his name. Hey, you know what, Lee? I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you about the hitting. Do you think you guys had an advantage in Pittsburgh? Uh, you had Bob Skinner there as a hitting coach, but how Bob much Skinner of a help a was he coach. considering? You guys had the Parkers, the Stargells, the Madlocks, the Gardners. The, the Stennets, I mean, then you had guys that can hit, that can pitch, and Robinson and Roden. I mean, how instrumental was that? It was almost like you had an advantage over everybody. That's Yeah, when when I was a pirate and I was playing there, what Bob Skinner taught, he taught the fundamentals of the game more than anything. You know, he, right. he, he taught us how to utilize the whole field. All the whole field. Hitters, and showed us. He showed us how to utilize the whole field. Yeah. And, you know, he always stressed shoulders and feet shoulders and feet perpendicular. You always want to try to hit the ball right center, left center. That enables you to hit strikes. But more importantly, he always stressed it helps you to utilize the whole field. So, you know, he said when you can do that, you're going to have more first and third situations. Mm-hmm. I don't see people talk about first and third situations. You get a guy on first base yeah. with no outs. Guy's gonna nine times out of ten nowadays. The guy's gonna pop the baseball up. Yeah. Back in those days, we was like, man, you got to keep it going. You got to try to put the ball in play. We want to try to go to first and third. You want to try to put. You want to try to put pressure on the defense. You want to. You want to try to generate as many runs as you can when you get in a situation where you have one out. If you look at them now, you know guys are not trying to hit. Even they're just not trying to hit hit the ball the other way. If you got a guy on second base. And move him over to third with no outs. Everybody's trying to drive the ball out of the ballpark, man. Yeah. You can hit 190 and you can hit 30 home runs and drive in 80. That give you a 300 million dollar contract. <laughs> I'm so telling you. Understand. Major and I'm baseball, looking at that. If you Major hit the baseball, has changed like you would never ever believe. That was never when I played. You didn't hear about that. If a guy hit 220, 230, he would sit down to the minor he league. He's in the minor league so far in the minor league. <laughs> I, and, and when you're talking about 190 with 30 home runs, I look at that and say, you probably got about 50 more hits. <laughs> and see, that well, not only run. that, yeah, that quote, man, I love. And, man, that should be on everybody's uh, uh, mantle. I can play this game, said Lee Lacey confidently. For hustle and determination, I won't take a back seat to anyone. And man, oh man, how how great is that quote? Because 
That is lacking in a lot of things in today's society. If you're, if, sometimes I think if you're confident, they look at you as arrogant, but they don't understand you're confident in your own skin and you know what you want. So what's wrong with that? Yeah. And I like to think that uh, uh, when you go to the plate, the pitcher's in more trouble than you are. If you don't have that attitude right there, say, hey, man, throw that ball up here. Yeah. Boy, are you in trouble now. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, what people don't realize, and both of you might have experienced it, um, getting traded during the season, and people think, "Well, oh God, we're going to get a you know a great player coming to our city." They don't realize, man. You got to pick up. You got three days to get to the other city, and you might not know everything. And now here comes the Rand McNally map or, or something today. Now it's the the iPhones and everything to get you around the city, but. How tough was that for you, both of you, if you getting traded, you know, and, and pick it up in another city? Uh, Bill, you first, and we'll give it over to Lee. I know this much. When I got traded the first time, it broke my heart. But instead of looking at where I'd been, I needed to look at where I was going. But, you know, a lot of guys are married, and they have their wives do that and stuff. And you, and you go, but it's the nature of the game. I hey man. I never moved myself in my life, and I'm moving now. But it's the kind of thing that, you, hey, man, I just packed a suitcase and got to the home hotel. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. Lee? Yes. Well, when I, how, how, tough is, how tough is it? Because a lot of people don't understand it. I mean, you know, the, the way you get, you know, it's not, this is not football, this is not basketball, this is not hockey. This is 162 games, pretty much close to 200 if you throw spring training in it. And then you got to mm-hmm. pick up, you get traded during the off season or de- traded during the season, and here you get, you just bought a house or something, you get acclimated to the city, now you got to go to another city, try to fit in there and everything. That's got to be tough. It's, it's worse than being an airline steward. It was very, it was very difficult when I came along because I had two young kids, and uh, I remember uh, I was traded to the Atlanta Braves, and I came right back uh, to the Dodgers. Uh, I was in, involved in a Dusty Baker Ed Goodson trade, and then once uh, the season started, I was traded back with Elliot Sosa, Mike Marshall, and another player went back to Atlanta, but then I was a free agent. And I and that's a luxury to be able to be a free agent and be able to come in town early and buy a home and do all those creative things that you need to get your family uh, comfortable. But trading when you get when you get traded to another ball club, you got to realize too that it's a business. It's a frame of mind that you have to be in, mm-hmm. and you have to realize that it's a business. And then once you realize it is a business, then your whole attitude should change, and you should say it's about winning, and it's about trying to take it to the next level and get to the World Series. Because so that was always my mindset, and I was very fortunate to play in four World Series, and then turn around and I we won it in 1969 uh, against the Baltimore Orioles. We are family. So once once the uh, season started. I always wanted to to play uh, in the World Series. And, you know, I was very fortunate to have a father, Barry Lacey, and then I had an Uncle Hiawatha, who was a left-handed pitcher. I had an Uncle Jesse, who was a third base. I had Uncle Walter, who played uh, uh, third base. And I had Uncle Leroy, who played uh, first base. And then my Uncle Hiawatha was a left-handed pitcher. So I was around a lot of people who played the game of baseball. So I had a really good – tutoring when I came up with my father, uh, and then I had uh, great mentorship in uh, Clint White and Shank and Jimmy Jules, and then I had my college coach who was a guy by the name of Don Christensen at Laney Junior College, so I was very fortunate. But having people in place when you are traded makes a big, big difference, you know, people yeah. you can talk to, uh, people you can reach out to if there was ever an issue. That's very, very important. You know, I can always reach back to Don Christensen, who was my college coach, and I can talk to him. And then I had my father right there who played with Charlie Neal, uh, my uncles who played with Charlie Neal in East Texas, where the Dodgers used to train in the early 1900s. So I, I was I was just really covered 
Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it all boils back down to, man, you've got to have an attitude. you got to have the right attitude to play the game of baseball because there's so many variables in a game mm-hmm. of baseball. You know, once you get on that field, you know, there's so many things that can happen, so you got to have the right attitude. You can't sit out on the field and say, don't hit the baseball to me because when you say that, that ball's going to come. The next <laughs> ball's coming to you. Yeah. The baseball will find you. Okay. Baseball will find you. So you got to have the right mindset. You know, you got to always be ready to make the play. And how you're going to do that? You got to always want the ball hit to you. But uh, when you get when you when you get traded, that's why you got you got to be strong. You have to be yeah. a strong-minded man. Mm-hmm. And you know, because you you're moving into a new city, and nine times out of ten, you're taking another guy's position. Uh, on the field, and you're taking someone else's position on the roster. Yeah, As, and you right. have to, but the but when you step between them white lines, the game's the same. You know, no matter where you are, you, you know, and that's a good part about it. Don't get so caught up. The game doesn't change for you when you get traded, and that's probably the most comfortable place you can uh, be when you have to adjust to a new city is on the field because that's that's your uh that's your your platform. business that's, that's your platform yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. baseball baseball is is i remember when i was growing up as a kid and this is a true story man uh, i remember at deformity park uh, i went out for a team there and I made the team, and I was nine years old. So I made the team as a guy by the name of Mr. Jones who ran Deformity Park. So after we had tried out, uh, Mr. Jones came in and said, wow, Lee, you're an outstanding young player. But I was well-seasoned because I used to play a game called strikeout in the backyard. So oh, I yeah. All the time. <laughs> so he says, you know, you guys, everyone has got to be 10 years old, right? Uh-huh. And I said, no, I'm not 10, I'm nine. So he says, well, you can't be on the team. Oh, I start crying right away, man. <laughs> I remember I got home, and I told Mom, I said, Mom, I can't be on the team because I'm I'm uh, nine years old. Now, back in those days, Mom worked and cleaned houses. So she took off that day, and she went right to Mr. Jones' face, and she said, my son is not nine, he's ten years old. And that was the start of my career, is having the right attitude. <clears throat> the right desires to to play the game. Yeah. So, wow! Everything we had the it's birth a, certificates. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, and not only that, we're down about three minutes. I, just, I wanted to talk about the Yankee Stadium. I know you guys came up a little short, the Dodgers and Yankee Stadium, but that game was something. I mean, will we ever see something like that? Reggie Jackson's three home runs and three consecutive pitches. Four consecutive because he hit one the game, yeah, yeah. The game before on uh, his swing. Yeah, that's, yeah you're run. right. He yeah, hit three swings that game when he hit three home runs. Reggie Jackson was is one of the most amazing players I've ever witnessed. He was when you talk about the mental aspects of it, how you have to believe. In the game of, of of baseball, you know, it's it's a mental game you have to play on yourself. He was the best man. He believed that he was a great <laughs> power hitter in his in the show because yeah, because the old saying, the, the point I was trying to make uh, when I was a kid coming up into Farmer Park is the game is all mental. You know, you can have all the skills in the world, but if you can't bring them out and uh, excel with those skills. Then you know the skills don't mean anything because I played with guys who was faster and, and was stronger and who could play better defense. But when he said play ball, they were nowhere to be be found. So I was very blessed to be able to take my game from the practice field to the uh, to the diamond. Yeah, and that, that's things, where the games are won. Two things I'll tell you is that Reggie Jackson, when all the lights were off. And everybody was watching. Was the greatest ball player I ever saw. Big moment. Amazing. Yeah. And the second thing is, baseball's a fight. When you're hitting, it's a fight against the pitcher. Okay. And you got to have the attitude. I don't want to be beat. Okay. 
And and if you don't have that, if you and you're not going to fight, you know that's how you play in the big leagues. Is you know you get there and they're they're going to try you many different ways, and if you can't adjust, to uh, they'll get you out all the time. And, right? and you know sometimes you got to give in. I say I get on my knees and put the bat in the middle of the plate rather than strike out. Okay, yeah. I wow. you ain't beating me. Yeah, you know, it was a fight. Well, I'll tell you this was a great one. We got to do it again down the line. We got to bring Lee back, and boy, I'll tell you three straight interviews with him. You, you could you could talk for hours and. I wanted to get in the big debate next time we get uh, Leon, Bill. Who is the better reliever, Raleigh Fingers with you guys or Kent DeCulvey with him? We'll find that question Come next on, time man. to get some answers. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we, we got to stir, stir the pot and keep it going. The listeners will like it. We'll figure I'll out when we break that thing down. this much. Who's in the Hall of Fame? Bill, <laughs> 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 yeah. hey, Bill, let, let everybody know how you can get, they can get a hold of you. I know next Tuesday we'll be watching. You'll be at the All-Star Game uh, in Seattle. I hope the American League beats them. You know, I'm going to keep it a little low there, but you know, now that you're part of that, and along with Dusty Baker and everything, I'm going to pull for the American League. Yeah, yeah, I was with Dusty Baker when he was here on Thursday at the Soho House in Malibu. And he told me that he's going to have you there, Bill. And he's excited yeah. for you, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah I just you, talked man. to him today, too. You know, we've been talking, and, and that is such an honor uh, to be able to be chosen like that. And, and, again, I'm humbled by the fact that I'm included. So, you know. Well, I love you good. both. It's, it's, it's going to be something, and, and we're so blessed to have Lee join in here. Uh, Bill, let us know how they can get a hold of you. You can reach me at Bill Norte, B I L L N O R T E, one five at gmail dot com. Anytime. Thank you, fans, for listening to us, and thank you, Lee, for your okay. input. And it's been wonderful. And we'll have you back. All right. I'm looking forward to oh that. man! Right. And for those two. Well, uh, I'm going to raise a Jolly Roger the next two days in Hollywood as the Pirates will make the Dodgers walk the plank. Till then. You ought to tell those Dodgers they're missing out by not having me involved in more. You, they, they, you know Dodgers. what? They should. You know, even at, even at your age, you could probably still out hit some of those guys. Well, you have these new owners come in, and everyone is trying to make a name for themselves by trying to say, oh, well, this guy don't fit the bill. This guy don't fit the bill. This guy yeah. doesn't have the stats. You know, so it's more about who they like. Yeah, yeah, about, yeah. You know, someone that can share the history. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. exactly right. And you're you're, you're darn good. Yep, yeah. and, yeah. and I'll Only tell you, we gotta keep we, we got to keep pushing it to the choir there, man. You're one of the best. I appreciate you, Lee. Anytime you, you got the red carpet, Bill. I can't wait to talk to you next week. You'll be on the field out there. Uh, you'll give us the recap yeah. on Wednesday with the All-Star Game. For everybody listening, catch the archive version of the True North Podcast, blogtalkradio.com forward slash Mancini Sports. We'll talk to you next Thank week. You. Have a blessed one, guys. I'm honored, guys, Thank to be part of the, 